students greased the railroad tracks that would carry the Tech train. Unable to stop, it slid five miles past the station, and Tech players, coaches, and fans had to walk back to Auburn. The tradition of the Auburn War Eagle goes even farther back to the Civil War, in fact. And every year since 1898, they've held the Rec Tech Parade as students march through the streets in their pajamas, just like their turn-of-the-century counterparts who slipped out of their boarding house, headed for the train station, and a permanent spot in the tradition of football. The dream started with the legendary John Heisman. He coached at both schools, coming to Auburn in 1895 and moving to Tech in 1904. And it continues with the trophy that bears his name. It may be headed back to Auburn in the possession of the Tigers' Bo Jackson. Trying to block that road to destiny today, the Black Watch, the heart of Georgia Tech's defense. It's a tradition as old as college football in the South itself as Auburn meets Georgia Tech on CBS. versus Georgia Tech. Today's game is sponsored by your Toyota dealer, the 1986 Celica. Totally redesigned for more performance and style. Who could ask for anything more? AC Delco, the smart parts. And by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light, it doesn't get any better than this. Fourth and 10 will punt the football away. Wagan on the return for Auburn. He's got a chance across the 50 into Georgia Tech territory at the 42. Second time that Auburn has had the football. Georgia Tech kicked off. Auburn picked up one first down, but the Black Watch defense held. And now you have to see Georgia Tech punted away after three straight incompletions. Mike Snow, the punter, had to make the tackle on Trey Gaines, the return man. And Auburn in good shape for its second possession. Steve? Well, the important aspect of the ball game is that everybody's concentrating on Bo Jackson. I think it's going to be the key of being able to watch John Dewberry on offense. Bo Jackson will get his yards just by the nature of the person he is. Jackson on the first possession had three carries for 11 yards. There he goes again. And once again, that black watch defense is there to stop him after a gain of only about two. Auburn fumbled on its first possession. But the Tigers were able to recover. And turnovers have been a problem for this offense, Steve. Well, generally when you're in an offense like the rushing offense, you're going to have the ball turned over a little bit. I think two aspects. The rushing aspect in terms of the uh, high emotion that you expect in the ball game, you've got to keep those turnovers down to minimum. Second and eight. Bo Jackson, the deep man in the eye, cuts it upfield. Ken Parker, the first man to hit him. And he reaches the 35-yard line. It's a gain of five, and still you hear the cheer from the Georgia Tech fans as the defense hung in there. The backfield has Pat Washington, the senior quarterback. He's their leader. Jackson, the man who will get the ball almost all the time. When he doesn't, Tommy Agee, number 30, the fullback, will get it. A very dangerous runner. And Ron Middleton is normally in there as the H-back, sort of the second tight end in their set, along with the regular tight end, Jeff Parks. Right now, they have two wide receivers in. Gainus, number 19, and Freddie Wagan, number 14. And this is Middleton in motion. Jackson on the sweep. Very close to the first down, but it looks like they will mark him short. And the tackle made by Anthony Harrison, the free. And Pat Dye has... No problems going for fourth and one. He's already done it several times, Steve. Well, I think that anytime you've got a prolific back in the backfield in Bo Jackson, the, pro the problem is you don't want to be so obvious with Bo Jackson. Sometimes use him as a decoy. Everybody in the stadium anticipates Jackson will get the ball. Two tight ends on fourth and one. It looked like Auburn moved early. Looked like the right side of that Tiger line got off the ball. A count ahead of the snap. And it will go against the Tigers. That'll make it fourth and six, and this is a more difficult decision. Well, no, I don't think it's that difficult. You're going to punt the ball away. What it represents, it's, a, it's not a turnover, but it's a crucial mistake. Rather than be fourth down and one, now they're fourth and five, have to punt. Dead ball, illegal procedure on offense, Lyman raising up. Bo Jackson has already carried the ball six out of eight plays from scrimmage for the Tigers, and he has 20 yards. 
and that will make him the most prolific ground gainer in the history of Auburn football, and they have had some great ones. Lewis Colbert on to punt, the nation's leading kicker, averaging more than 47 yards a kick. And deep to receive for Georgia Tech is Corey Collier. He probably will not get a chance to run this one back. Going for the corner, and they'll get it. Marked. Now outside the five, and they'll stop at the seven-yard line. Lewis Colbert pins them deep in their territory with 9.59 to go. We'll be back after this. You're joining us in progress because of the runover of the Ohio State and Purdue game. We are scoreless here with Georgia Tech and Auburn, 9.59 to go. Georgia Tech first and 10 from its own seven-yard line. John Dewberry at quarterback, and he'll pitch it to Jerry Mays trying to get outside, and no luck at all. Mays run out of bounds by that big defense led by Gerald Williams, the right tackle, the senior from Valley, Alabama. Mays has been quite a story the last couple of weeks. Gained more than 300 yards. Georgia Tech was the only major college to offer him a scholarship, and they are very, very happy they've done it now. Pat Dye, the head coach at Auburn. No coach has ever had more success in his first four years. Dye now in his fifth of the four and one record coming in. Second and eight for Georgia Tech. Gary Lee is the man in motion. This is Jerry Mays. Mays hit hard as he reached the 15 yard line. But a good gain for the Yellow Jackets. Edward Phillips, the linebacker, in on the stop. Linebackers do not make a lot of tackles for this ball club. Very unusual, it's their down linemen who do most of the damage. Tracy Rocker, the left tackle, Harold Hart, Homeland, the nose guard, and Gerald Williams, the right tackle. Three of the top five tacklers on the ball club. Third and a yard for Georgia Tech. They have yet to have a first down. Their first possession, they threw three straight incomplete passes. Mays in motion and Dewberry to throw. And it's complete, and it should be enough for a first down. John Dewberry with those passes under the zones. It's his tight end, Tim Mannion, Arthur Johnson, and Russ Carricker, the linebacker, in on the stop. Gerald Williams, 98, is the number one tackler on this defensive football team of Auburn. Here's the frustration of being a pass rusher. You've got to be a relentless. You've just got to keep plodding away, pushing and struggling. Oftentimes, you come up with nothing. First first down of the ball game for Georgia Tech. Mays, again, in motion. They'll give it to King, the fullback. King doesn't get much. Tracy Rocker, number 74, the first man to hit him, along with Phillips, 46, the linebacker. There's Bill Curry, and they have done a wonderful job here at Georgia Tech by letting him rebuild this program his way. In six years, he has a 21-37 and two record, but he has Georgia Tech on the verge of being back where it belongs in big-time college football. Second and eight after a gain of two from King, the fullback. Dewberry on the option, no dice. And waiting for him was Gerald Robinson, the left end, and Dewberry had nowhere to go. One of the things about Georgia Tech's offensive concept this week is that they have not shown the option play all season. They felt like they needed to take a little bit of attention out of the rushing lanes on Dewberry in the passing game, so make them think a little bit more on the outside about the run. Dewberry is not a, a prolific option quarterback by any means, but the point is the threat of it. You will cause your cornerbacks, your perimeter people to stay at home more often. Third and eight. Two wide receivers in the ballgame. Here is a draw. It's Charles Mack, the fullback, across the 30 to the 31. He has another Georgia Tech first down. Nice call by the Georgia Tech coaching staff. They know that big pass rush was coming. Well, you anticipate that Georgia Tech has to throw the football, so that will create opportunities for the draw play. Oftentimes, the hard rush of Auburn that they're known for in the passing game, he gets an excellent block on the outside. He's able to break into the secondary. With a hard pursuing defense, the draw play is very effective. Georgia Tech out of the eye. This is Corey Collier into the ballgame for the first time. He gets outside. Corey Collier almost had a chance to break it. Just tripped up by Edward Phillips, number 46. And if Phillips doesn't get him, it's off to the races for another member of that microchip backfield. He's only 5'7". 
two aspects of the game that I think are very important early is the emotional aspect of Georgia Tech. I think the emotion is on their side of the field. Plus, offensively, they have to say, play what the coaches say, unconscious football, play above their ability. Emotion provides that opportunity oftentimes. Georgia Tech on a drive that started from their own seven yard line has reached the 46. Dewberry, an all ACC quarterback. To Mays, back in the tailback. Mack could not get his man out of the way, and it was Phillips and Russ Carricker, 46 and 47, to knock him out of bounds. Let's go to New York for an update. Mike Syracuse has been throwing short most of the day, but here they go up top. Don McPherson to Mike Ciano, 45 yards later. Syracuse is up on top, 20 to 17, with under six minutes left, and the Orange have the ball. Well, let's go back to Mike and Steve. Six minutes, 43 seconds to go in the quarter. We're scoreless between Georgia Tech and Auburn, but Georgia Tech on a drive at their own 49-yard line, second and seven. Lee is in motion. They'll give it to the fullback. That's Malcolm King, the sophomore from America's Georgia, into Auburn territory for the first time today. Andre Bruce, number 93, was in on the stop, along with Pat Thomas. The Auburn coaching staff on defense really felt like, Mike, that Georgia Tech was not a sustained drive-oriented football team that they would have to take at the distance. They're starting at the seven-yard line. They've gobbled up the yards and the time, and I think that's a point that really will be in the confidence-building category for Georgia Tech. Plus, it keeps Bo Jackson off the field. Exactly. <laughs> Clock turning with 6.10 to go, first quarter. Third down, three yards to go. Dewberry on the option, lost the football. And Auburn. Looks like they have it in Tech territory. That's a mistake you do not see John Dewberry make very often, but he made it that time. Well, he's out of his element a little bit. Running the option play is not what John Dewberry is really known for. Six minutes to go, first quarter. We are scoreless. Georgia Tech and Auburn from Grant Field in Atlanta. John Dewberry doesn't have the experience of running the option play. This is the first time they've shown it. It's the counter option. He goes down the line. Andre Bruce, 93, strips him of the ball. He almost recovered it, and then the ball bounces away, and they give it up. There it is at the end of the play. Gerald Williams falls in the ball. Auburn with its third possession of the ball game, and A.G., the fullback, goes straight up the middle. Got maybe a yard. Georgia Tech's defense has been tough this year, especially giving up points. They rank eighth in the country, allowing only 12.4 points a game. And on total defense, they're giving up 301.8 yards a game. That is 20th in the country. Auburn's defense, incidentally, is 10th. This is second and eight. Two wide receivers, they'll run out of the eye. Parks is the tight end, and Washington wants to throw under pressure, floats it sideline. Rutland had it right in his hand and dropped it. Reggie Rutland had the ball hit him in the chest. The pass was intended for Trey Gaines, but that one was way under throw. And look at Rutland shake his head. So many times in any aspect of sport, you have a tendency where you know you're going to put it away. You're going to get the slam dunk. You're going to drive it to the baseline in tennis, whatever the sport might be. You're so ready for it, and then all of a sudden you choke on it. And that's exactly what happened. Reggie Rutland wondering how he could have missed that one. Third down, eight yards to go. And they'll give it to A.G., the fullback. He'll get two and be way short of the first down. And that Georgia Tech black watch defense has held again. Ralph Malone, number 95, made the stop on the junior from Maplesville, Alabama. Georgia Tech is playing with the intensity that the coaches really felt like they would. That is never a problem when you're playing against a highly ranked team or a team that has a prolific runner to get ready for. Sometimes, I think Rutland's case, it was the over-emotion, the over-anticipation of maybe getting the ball. Colbert comes in to punt. That's Corey Collier, number 25, waiting at his own 10-yard line. Last time, Colbert was able to put the ball out of bounds at the 7. We'll see if he goes for the corner again. And he may have gotten another one. And the official will mark it at the 14, between the 14 and the 15-yard line, and Georgia Tech will start from there. So once again, the Ramblin' Wreck will not have good field position. 4.29 to go first quarter. We're still scoreless. 
you. Four minutes and 29 seconds to go. First quarter, Georgia Tech pinned deep in its own territory once again at the 14-yard line. John Dewberry, the quarterback. That's Davenport, number 26 in motion. Dewberry fumbled again. And it looks like he got it back. John Dewberry fighting with the nose guard, Harold Hallman, trying to recover that fumble, and there is a flag down. Hallman jumped off sides. It makes the handoff a little tough. Yeah, especially when he's in your backfield. <laughs> and has you around the throat. Here's the end of the play. Hallman really lunged forward before the ball was snapped. Encroachment on the defense. First down and five. Watch Mr. Hallman inside, number 94. He's through the line of scrimmage and almost, he wanted to take the handoff from Mr. Dewberry. Well, he's quick, but he's not that quick. Yeah, really, I mean. <laughs> Hallman, a member of the Marine ROTC at Auburn, and they say he plays the way the Marines go after an island. First and five. This is Mays trying to get outside. He has room. Across the 30 to the 34-yard line. First down for Georgia Tech, and it was Ben McCurdy, number 52, who had to make the tackle after a 14-yard carry for Jerry Mays. Today, we'll see a lot of sweet plays and variations from both sides of the ball, both Auburn and Georgia Tech. This time, Jerry Mays, number 20, the freshman, he sets up his opportunity. Watch him give it an inside fake, then break outside really stretches the defense and stretches those lanes of pursuit by being able to create an opportunity, then break again. Mays comes out of the ball game at number 25. Corey Collier comes in. This is Davenport in motion who threw a good block on the last play. King, the fullback, tripped up as he crossed the 35 to about the 36-yard line. And one getting up off the bottom of the pile is Andre Bruce. Sorry, Mike. One of the things that Georgia Tech is doing right now, they're changing the strength of the formation almost in every play. And what they want to do is take the emotional aspect out of Auburn's defense, make them be very basic in their adjustments and their coverage. You can't play real emotional when you're a little bit confused. And this is the defense that held Ole Miss to a total of nine yards. Total offense. Collier on a little swing. 40-41. What a shot he took. Tom Powell and Kevin Porter, and Powell is as good as there is at a free safety, and he nailed Corey Collier. What happens, Auburn gets tied up inside, looking at, thinking it's going to cross the middle, then all of a sudden, real quick to Collier on the outside. They're really trying to stretch this Auburn defense, get them where they cannot really be predictable. Georgia Tech, it's very difficult on a, on a computer run to figure out just what they do. They change their, their tendencies up so much. Third down, two yards to go from the Tech 42. Jerry Mays back in the ball game, very close to the first down yardage. Had to get just across the 43-yard line. Stopped by Gerald Robinson, the left end. 253-pound senior. They'll measure for the first down. You might have heard the official saying, uh, it looks like it's a first down, but let's measure. There's Pat Dye on the sideline. And it is a first down by the length of the football for Georgia Tech. And you can hear the reaction from the mainly partisan Georgia Tech crowd here at Grant Field. Football is back in Atlanta because of that man, Bill Curry. First and 10, Georgia Tech. They have been in Auburn territory once, but that's when Dewberry fumbled on the action play. Fullback, Matt, hitting the backfield. May have lost a yard on that one, and Tracy Rocker went right over the top of center Andy Hearn. He was stopped by number 74, Tracy Rocker. This is what the defensive people are seeing in terms of the inside play. Georgia Tech trying to stretch them both sides, inside, kind of a crossbuck type play, and there's no way they're going to go anywhere with Tracy Rocker in the middle. Bracken, Hearn, and Thomas unable to keep that front line out of their backfield. Minute and a half left of the first period. We're scoreless. Second and 11. And Dewberry to throw against a straight four-man rush over the middle to his tight end. That's Massey at the 30 to the 27-yard line. Robert Massey, the sophomore from Tifton, Georgia. He and Mannion, the other tight end, have shown that ability to get open, especially down the middle. 
And Dewberry laid it in there. In the first series of the ball game, Dewberry threw three passes over the receiver. A little high strung, overly emotional. Right in between the gap, you've got to force Powell, Arthur Johnson, the free safety and strong safety. You split them, and that's exactly what happened. Massey's got the great tight end hands, ability to go across the middle. A 30-yard gain, first and 10 at the 27. King plows his way forward to about the 25-yard line. If but Auburn very tough in the middle of that defense. If Georgia Tech expects to win the ball game today, John Dewberry will have to be a star in the game. He will have to complete more passes like that. He will have to keep Auburn's defense out of tempo with what they normally want to do. He's going to have to pull them out of their character. Second down, eight yards to go with 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Two tight ends in the ball game for Georgia Tech. Lee, the flanker, he's the man in motion. Collier trying to get outside. 20. Down to about the 17-yard line, very close to another first down. Ben McCurdy made the tackle. Eight yards for Corey Collier. He and the freshman Jerry Mays alternating at tailback and doing a great job of it. Collier really gives Georgia Tech more power. When you get inside the 20-yard line, you become a little bit more conservative. Turn after this message and a word from your local station. Second quarter at Grant Field in Atlanta, Georgia Tech with the first scoring threat of the ball game. Third and one from the Auburn 18 yard line. And Dewberry with a play action fake. He'll keep it and get the first down as he dives forward inside the 17-yard line. Right now, let's go to New York for a college football update. Mike, Penn State trailing, scored with 153 left on a pick play. John Schaefer to Steve Smith, that put them up 24 to 20. There's less than a minute to play, and Penn State keeps winning those close ones. Let's go back to Mike and Steve. Joe Paterno is doing a lot with a team that most people didn't think was going to be undefeated at this part of the season. Well, Coach Paterno is, uh, you know, he's been wrapped a little bit hard the last couple of years, so. They say even his posters aren't selling well up there. Ah. life-size cutouts. First and 10, Georgia Tech at the 16-yard line. Collier right side. Good balance, got him to the 14-yard line, but no more as Kevin Porter out of Warner Robins, Georgia, the left corner, came up to hit him hard. He was stopped by number three, Kevin Porter. There's John Davis. Number 65, trying to get something outside for Collier. Yards get a little bit tougher inside the 20. You have to take a little bit more chances on defense and offensively history. You generally tend to be a little more conservative. This is the 11th play of a Georgia Tech drive that started at its own 15-yard line. Dewberry, now he wants to go the other way. Inside the 10 and pushed out of bounds by Kevin Porter at the seven-yard line. Well, they don't draw him up that way, but it worked. I think it showed the athletic ability of John Dewberry. The play was a total disaster. That's one of those <laughs> oh my plays when you come down yeah. the line of scrimmage and you realize the option play is not the play you should have called, but you, you've got to be creative. You've got to be impromptu, and that's exactly what happened. And then Dewberry showed his talent by being able to put a move on Porter and to turn a loss into a slight gain. Dewberry capable of running the ball. He's shown that already in this one. Third and a yard for Georgia Tech. Again, two tight ends, and they'll split the backs. King and Mays, and Dewberry wants the throw. Got a man wide open. Mays! Touchdown, Georgia Tech! receiving touchdown of his career. He has thrown two, by the way, on the option pass. But that one had to be sweet for him. Thomas Palmer, out of Dewberry's hold, will try to add the extra point. 
And Georgia Tech is going to have to burn one of its timeouts on a point after play. And you bet Bill Curry will not be happy about that. I think they only had 10 men on the field. That's the first time out of the In football, so many times we have the statistical line for turnovers, and yet those type of mistakes are so crucial in a ball game. And at the end of a ball game, the coaches will reflect, remember, well, if we ran out of timeouts in a particular period or something, those type of things really eat on you as a coach. There's Dewberry, who got his seventh touchdown pass of the season on the little seven-yard toss to Jerry Mays. And it has been all Georgia Tech in this ballgame. They have totally taken away the momentum from Bo Jackson and Auburn. This is Thomas Palmer. Kicking has been something of a sore point for Georgia Tech this year. David Bell, who had such a great season in 1984, has a leg injury, and Palmer has taken over as the kicker. Had no problem with points after 12 out of 12, but has had some trouble with field goals. Good snap. Dewberry puts it down. And the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech will take a 7 0 lead over Auburn. What happens is you begin to stretch the defense again. You put pressure on the perimeter people. Now they've got a very tough decision. Do you come forward, rush, or do you try to drop back in the pass? Bruce was out of position. He did not pick up Mays out of the backfield. It resulted in a touchdown for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech on top of Auburn, 7 0. We'll be back with more of the second quarter in a moment. Lead over Auburn and Jerry Mays. Number 20 is the young man who caught the touchdown pass from John Dewberry to put the underdog Yellow Jackets on top. And now they'll kick it away. Fullwood is the deep man standing in his goal line. He'll take it four yards deep and bring it out. Fullwood bouncing off tacklers. And Palmer, the kicker, is the man who has to push him out of bounds at the 30. Five yard line. Fullwood had been averaging 18 yards a kick return, and he broke a big one that time of 39 yards. It's rather difficult to believe, but Brent Fullwood is considered a tougher runner to bring down than Bo Jackson by the coaches and by the defensive staff at Auburn. They've had to practice against him because of his power, his proud running style. He really puts the intimidation. 13.33 to go first half. It's Georgia Tech on top of Auburn by a touchdown. 13.33 to go in the first half. Auburn with the football at its own 35-yard line. Down 7-0. And Bo Jackson on the toss. And that is what has happened to him this entire ballgame. He has been swarmed by the Georgia Tech defense. Ricardo Ingram. 47 93 Ted Roof and you will see Roof in there all the time. Don Lindsay the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech really felt like that what he wanted to accomplish this week in practice was that for Georgia Tech to come into the ball game and play loose. Do not be intimidated by Auburn's great offense. So far they've not been at Georgia Tech 121 yards on offense to Auburn's uh, very uh, one third of that type of one fourth of that production. They have been laying in wait for Bo Jackson. He's trying to get outside. Look at that speed. Jackson 50. Cuts it back to the Georgia Tech 28 yard line. And no matter how many times you bring him down at the line of scrimmage, if you relax for a second, it's see you later. There are two philosophies to how to stop the pitch play or the sweep play. One is to bounce him outside. This is not the nature of Georgia Tech. This is not what they wanted to do, but they do. If you bounce him outside, you better have the interior speed to get to the outside. Georgia Tech does not possess that speed. They've got to force Bo Jackson inside on the sweep play if they want to be successful. With that 20-yard carry, and uh, here's where he stepped out of bounds. Well, that's a good call right on the sideline, so they'll mark it at the Georgia Tech 41-yard line. It is a first down, however, for Auburn. Following A.G., this is Brent Fullwood. In to give Jackson a little breather, and he crosses the 40 down to about the 39-yard line. And it was Mark Pike on the stop. Pat Swilling really is an outstanding player. He's always at the, generally, the tight inside. This is the open side because they're in the, the wide set. Swilling just having to pursue the best defensive player on their football team. He's always going to be the point of attack. He's a load at 245, a defensive end. 
Second down, seven yards to go. Fullwood is in a tailback. The Jackson gets a breather. Washington to throw, and it's blocked. Knocked down by Ken Parker, the defensive tackle, who had an interception and a blocked field goal a week ago. It was the ACC Defensive Lineman of the Week. And he just stuck those big paws up there and stuffed it. Parker's been the most consistent player. Watch him, 84. He's a former tight end, so had he caught the ball, he would have known what to do with it. There he is on the left side, number 84. Gets his big paws up, as you said, and the ball, Pat Washington throws it more in a direct line because he's a strong-arm quarterback. Very little trajectory. And Parker had a chance to knock it down. Washington now 0 for 3 in the passing department. And he's back to throw again under a blitz. He'll run out of there. 30. If he didn't step out of bounds, it's a touchdown, but he did step out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Tough break for Auburn and a great break for Georgia Tech because Washington just set sail. Boy, I tell you, as a quarterback, you get a chance to break into a seam or a crease like that, you do not run out of bounds. There's no reason. He just got lost his mental concentration. There's no reason to run out of the bounds in this particular situation. He's got the coverage beat. No one's in pursuit. He just swings it wide. There's no reason. That's a critical mistake. I guess he's so excited he thought he was going to score. <laughs> Choked on it. It's not what you expect from a senior, and that's why he's in there. First and ten, Auburn trying to even this ball game up. And it's Bo Jackson back into the ball game. Breaking tackle, driving inside the ten. Holy cow, what a run by Bo Jackson. Finally stopped Ivory Lee, the nose guard, had to chase him down from behind. Just so strong, Steve. Why Bo Jackson will win the Heisman Trophy is because of runs just like this, because he sets up his own opportunities. Watch this. He will get the ball. Now he creates a seam, a crease. There doesn't look like there's much there, but he's able to use his head, go forward, power, his acceleration, and his vision. First and goal from the eight-yard line. Jackson, he's got some room on this one, and is down to the four. A.G., an excellent lead blocker, number 30, the fullback. He had 22 knockdowns against Southwestern Louisiana. That means he puts the other guy on the ground. A.G., a junior from Maplesville. Had a big run a week ago against Florida State when they were concentrating on Bo Jackson, and he just cracked it up the middle. Jackson now 10 carries, 59 yards. Second and goal from the four. A.G. That's what happened a week ago. Wherever Bo Jackson goes, it looks like 10 men go with him, and there was nobody home to take, take on A.G. Seven to six, Georgia Tech by one with 10.50 to go in the first half. And Chris Knapp will come on to try to tie it up. And does. Tommy Agee started since his freshman year. He's a junior. He's a wishbone fullback. Watch, everybody is thinking outside. They missed the tackle. They've got to put him away because they're concentrating on the outside. Only one man had a chance to make the play on him, and he goes into the end zone. Here it is again. The outside man, I can't really tell who it was that missed the tackle, did not wrap him up. With Auburn's backs, you've got to be an extremely sure tackler. 7-7. Seven, seven. Ten minutes and 50 seconds to go from Grand Field in Atlanta. Back with more in a moment. And it's Mays at the goal line. As a seam. Jerry Mays pulled down at the 36, and they pulled him down with the face mask. A big return for the little freshman from Thompson, Georgia, who caught the touchdown pass earlier. Mike, on all the film that I watched of Jerry Mays, it has an unbelievable, uncanny ability to really break tackles. You cannot get, for a great back, you can't get the great hit on him, and that's what he did on the return. Here's the call. Five-yard penalty, face mask on the run back on the defense. First down. 
Crowd was going because they wanted 15 on that one. He gets a good wall in front of him, and what happens, he starts to find that little seam or crease and uses his speed and cuts back. Just no one's able to get a direct hit on him. There's the penalty. Pat Thomas pulled him down by the face mask. First and 10 from the 42. Dewberry under pressure. Can't get rid of it, and we chased out of bounds for a loss. And a flag goes down for a late hit. The Toyota Leadership Award is presented weekly to a team member who's been singled out by his athletic department and faculty advisor for his team contributions, grades, and citizenship. Today's game winners are Rob Schuler of Auburn and Ted Roof of Georgia Tech. Toyota will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. I will check the penalty for you, and this, too, will go against Auburn, and this one will be for 15 yards. Here's the call from C.C. Daly. Dead ball, personal foul, hitting out of bounds. First down. Thank you. Bill Curry looking on as his team crosses into Auburn territory again at the 47-yard line. 10.35 to go first half. And those Auburn mistakes on penalties are starting to add up. Dewberry gives it to King, his fullback. Had a little hole up the middle, gets to about the 42-yard line before he's shoved back. Auburn's defense very tough up the middle. Andre Bruce is in on the stop. Along with Alex Dukechuk. He's number 80 checking in for the first time. Second and five, Georgia Tech. With a tight end, number 40, Mannion. Switches to the near side, and they'll send Davenport in motion. Mays, again, trying to get outside. Not this time. Nice play by Arthur Johnson, the strong safety, who just played it the way you're supposed to. Take a look at some other scores around the country so far as we get a late start here in Atlanta. And here's the big one, Michigan and Iowa, nothing, nothing, second quarter. Michigan defense hasn't been tough or anything this year. 10-6 Tennessee beats Alabama 16-14. Number 20 over number 15. Nebraska also a winner by eight over Missouri, closer than most people expected. Florida swamped southwestern Louisiana. Third and four, Georgia Tech from the Auburn, 41. Here comes the blitz on Dewberry, and they got him from behind. And it's Pat Thomas, the defensive right end. Dewberry never saw him and never had a chance. A loss of 10 on the play, and they'll have to punt it away. Auburn did not want to come in and have to blitz against John Dewberry. They wanted to be able to use their four- and five-man rush, and this time Pat Thomas really uses, the coaches say he's four six, but his quickness seems to be so much more impressive on film. Mike Snow, who's averaging 40.9 yards a kick, is in to punt it away. And Trey Gaines is deep to receive. And Snow knocks the air out of it. And it will be down inside the five by Georgia Tech special team. Auburn has been able to put them deep twice, and Georgia Tech returns the favor. They'll spot it at the one. 8.19 to go in the half. We're tied 7-7, Auburn and Tech. Five from the six-yard line. Encroachment on the defense, first down and five, repeat. Check some other scores for you, and we have a tie. Georgia tied by Vandy, 13-13. There's the Nebraska score again. A lot of trouble with Missouri. Ohio State in the game you saw earlier over Purdue, 41-27. It was much closer than that, and Tennessee beating Alabama by two. First and five, Auburn. That's Middleton, the eighth back in motion. Bo Jackson. Trying to get outside, no dice, lost the ball. I think they'll rule it down. The ground cannot cause a fumble. And that's what they'll call it. They'll say Jackson hit the ground before the ball came loose. Makes you hold your breath if you're a coach. It just depends on which side of the field you're on. <laughs> I think both of them are holding their breath. Well, that may be true too. Now, 
on films that I saw on Bo Jackson, it appears like any great back, he is human. I, you know, if, if he's Might able some to, argument on that, though. Well, no. If you force him inside, he goes down. If you if you outman him, he goes down. Second and three. Jackson gets close to the nine-yard line. It will be shy of a first down again. And if you tackle him around the ankles, he goes down. I mean, it, it, that's one of the things that the coaching staff, they are so impressed with Bo in the sense that a lot of people have already put an S on his shirt, you know, for Superman. But the point is, is that Bo has that capability. He's very human, and he, he certainly is a great running back. But the point is, is that uh, you just watch him play. He's patient all day long, and all of a sudden, he breaks the big run, makes a big play. Oh, we saw in the first quarter that black watch defense had contained him very, very well, and then one man missed a tackle, and he was gone. That's right. Third down, two yards to go. Big play here. Auburn at its own nine. Middleton, the man in motion. They'll fake it in Washington. Being chased by Jurgensen and got by him and has the first down. Finally knocked out of bounds over there by Mark Hogan, the bandit. Good play by Washington, and Paul Jurgensen just didn't have the speed to chase him down. But there's a flag down, and the preliminary indication is against Auburn, and Pat Dye doesn't like that. And it's a clip. And you just saw Pat Dye talking with one of the officials, and he told the Auburn players to get back from the sideline. Right here. 23 yards. Be half the distance to the goal line from the 23, so Auburn not out of trouble yet. Black Watch defense has acquitted itself pretty well against a very veteran and tough offensive line for the Tigers. Here's the call. Clipping on the offensive team. Repeat third down. Jeff Parks, number 82 appears to be the culprit pushing right there. Yes, he's pushing on Malone, number, no, let's see, who was it? Who was he pushing on? It's Ricardo Ingram, I believe, 47. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was Ricardo. That was the clip. This is Fullwood into the ball game at tailback to give Bo Jackson a breather, and he is up to the 16. Check some other scores for you around the country. Notre Dame beats Army 24 to 10. And when was the last time anybody said Notre Dame knocking off Army was an upset? Here's Pitt over Rutgers, 38 to 10. Or a crucial victory. That's right. West Virginia beats Boston College. Navy crushes Lafayette that game in the fourth quarter. West Virginia now 4-4-1. Four, four and, and what an upset there. Virginia Tech over Virginia. This is A.G., the fullback, no chance. Ted Roof, a hold of that left ankle and would not let go. It'll bring up third and about five yards to go. Auburn has had success offensively, Mike, when they've been able to go outside and test the speed of Georgia Tech's defense. They do not have the speed to play an outside, sideline to sideline game. As long as Auburn continues to go inside, that's got to make Don Lindsay, the defensive coordinator, a little bit more excited. There's Roof. That's the kind of play that Georgia Tech is inviting. They want you to come inside. 5.09 to go first half, tied at seven, third and four for the Tigers. From their own 18. Washington to throw, he lost the football. Now he's got it back and he's in a lot of trouble. Cleve Pounds takes him out of bounds at the seven yard line. Well, I thought Pat Washington may have gotten away with one there. He lost it, it bounced right back to him, but he lost 12 yards. I'll tell you what, if I were Pat Washington tomorrow, they'll watch the film of this game. That'll be a horror film for him. The play just, it's supposed to be one, two, three, throw the ball. He's got his hand up the throw. The ball is batted down away from him. Now, the impromptu play, and he can't do anything with it. And he's finally pulled down. Lewis Colbert. Standing near the end line will have to punt it away. And Gary Lee is waiting at the 50. Collier with a beautiful punt. And Lee signals fair catch driven all the way back to his own 42-yard line. What a gorgeous kick by the nation's leading punter. 52 yards. Timeout with 447 left. We're still tied in Atlanta. To go in the half. Dewberry naked reverse. Throws, and it's complete to Gary Lee at the Auburn 39-yard line. 
Kevin Porter, number three, was there, but not close enough. And Gary Lee has been Georgia Tech's big play receiver. John Dewberry had all the luxury of time that he needed. They had uh, Arthur Johnson unable to put any pressure on him, and all he had to do is find Gary Lee, 33, that had pushed deep on Porter and then come back, came back for the football. First and 10 Yellow Jackets. That's Davenport in motion. They'll give it to the fullback. That's Joel Carter in there for the first time. Down to the 35-yard line. Pat Thomas, who had a big sack earlier, makes the stop. Carter, a senior, doesn't play a whole lot. Next Saturday on CBS, more college football action. Heisman hopeful Keith Byers of Ohio State takes his show on the road to Minnesota to go against Lou Holtz and the Golden Gophers next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on CBS Sports. Right here at second and seven for Georgia Tech at the Auburn 35. Mays, the man in motion, and Dewberry wants to go deep. Swipe that ball from Jimmy Warren. Thirty-three yards, and Dewberry just sort of hung it out there. If you can find 45, right there, number 45, Jimmy Warren. Jimmy Warren sees that he's got a great opportunity to intercept the ball, so he's waiting on the football. He doesn't go for the ball. You've got to not be lazy or deliberate. He was waiting. You've got to see it and go catch it. That's why Lee was able to make the catch. First and goal, Mays inside the one. Hit hard by Arthur Johnson, the strong safety. J Jimmy Warren on that pass on that previous play was just sitting back waiting for it. When you see that it's going to be a little bit behind the receiver, go for the football because all of a sudden, you know, Gary Lee's in a position he sees it's going to be short. He makes the adjustment and steals the ball out of awaiting Jimmy Warren's hands. Gary Lee sure didn't give up. He's had four touchdown grabs this year. Not the best pass you'll see Dewberry throw. But Gary Lee turned it into a great one. Second and goal from the one. King is the fullback. Mays the tailback. Two tight ends. Mays. Touchdown. What a hole they opened on the left side. And Jerry Mays. The little guy at 5'7 walked right through. When you run the sweep play, you create creases. Mays represents the sweep to the outside. You think outside, everybody's pushing outside. He goes inside for the touch. The point after by Thomas Palmer is good. And Georgia Tech has regained the momentum. 14 to 7 and has a sellout crowd on its feet. Here again, watch everybody flowing to the outside. They see Mays has the ball. He gets walled off inside and is able to go right through the crease for the touchdown. Two of the Auburn defenders tackle the fullback, Malcolm King. Excellent block by Hearn, number 50, to open him up and create that little opportunity to go through and give them the 14 to 7 lead. Here's a short pooch kick. And it's taken by Parks, the tight end, on the fair catch to 29. I don't know if that was intentional or not. It looked like it was. Tomorrow on the NFL Today, Irv Cross will have a look at the Rams' big play defense, the main factor in L.A.'s 6-0 start this season. John Madden will explain to you why Lawrence Taylor has not been as effective this season as in others, plus a look at the World Series with Pete Rose. That's all tomorrow on the NFL Today. Auburn. First and 10 at its own 29. They have no passing yards so far. They'll give it to Bo Jackson, cutting it back. Jackson ran right over Ricardo Ingram to reach the 44-yard line. Boy, he's strong. Hates to lift weights, too. I wonder well, what would happen if he did. Uh, well, we put an S on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, his, his leg strength is obviously one of the the vital points will makes Bo Jackson. And I think the coaches also agree that it's his attitude, the way he's handled the pressure of the media and the way he responds to the team. He's very much dedicated to the team goal. Washington back to throw under pressure. Gets it away, it's incomplete. 
Had it in the hands of Scott Bolton, his split end, but Bolton couldn't hold it as Cleve Pounds came up to hit him. That's one of the weak areas of Pat Washington's game. He really has an exceptionally strong arm. The problem is on those short passes where you need to take a little off the ball, he drives it so hard. The point of the ball is coming down at you. It's very difficult to get ball to catch, and he's 0-4 right now, so he needs to learn to take a little bit off of uh, his strong arm when he throws the ball. He put Washington in the quarterback the last two ball games, and they have scored 100 points in those last two games. They had been playing musical chairs at quarterback before then. Washington back to throw, draw to Jackson. Got room to run. Good tackle by Ingram, a member of that black watch unit who came up to get him at the 47-yard line, but he is so dangerous. Bo Jackson has the ability. He's just like an option quarterback, Mike. He takes the he will take the sweet play one of three places, inside, middle, or outside. This time he starts in the middle, breaks it outside. He's just kind of scissoring through, finding his hole, his open area to get the yards out of the secondary. Another good lead block from fullback Tommy Agee. Jackson now 87 yards on the day. He is the leading rusher of all time in Auburn football history. Only needed 16 yards coming in. Only needed nine to hit 1,000 for the year. First and 10, Washington back to throw. Fullwood, he lost it. And that one was not Washington's fault. That was Fullwood's. A reminder next Saturday from what should be a sold-out Madison Square Garden, CBS Sports presents Patrick Ewing's NBA debut. The New York Knicks host the Philadelphia 76ers. Ewing perhaps the most celebrated player to join the league since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar arrived in 1969. And in the season opener, he'll face a tough test against Moses Malone and the 76ers next Saturday at 1 Eastern right here on CBS. Ewing against Malone. That'll be a war. Anywhere Ewing goes, they're generally to right. war. Second and ten for Auburn. Washington to throw again. Wants to throw the screen and does the full one, and he dropped it again. Now, Washington is going to see Fullwood out there the next time, and he's not going to throw him the ball. Well, that time, Pat Washington really set up the screenplay extremely well, threw the ball very soft. I wonder if the sun might have had a little bit to do with uh, the ability to catch the ball, okay. the angle of the sun. But it was a soft ball. It was set up. Just uh, fell right in the, out of his arms, though, out of his hands. Third and 10 with 1.27 to go. And Miami leading Oklahoma 14-7. That's the half. That's not so unpredictable, though. No, you were saying it earlier. Here's the draw. Fullwood. He may not be able to catch it all that well, but he can sure run it. Incidentally, Auburn's tailbacks have not caught a pass this season. Maybe that's why. <laughs> It'll be another first down for the Tigers with 1.17 to go after a 17-yard game. What a luxury to have Bo Jackson and then having a Brent Fullwood to back him up to be able to rest Bo when he gets a little bit tired, to keep him fresh in the ball game and give it to a runner, a, a junior, that's even tougher to tackle than Bo Jackson. The clock running, we're approaching a minute. Washington. Wants to throw, completes it to his tight end parts. Little dump over the middle. Roof is in there on the tackle. Along with Hogan, the bandit back, number 36. First completion of the day for Pat Washington. He is one for down seven. Down the line of scrimmage, setting up. It's kind of like a little short option. Then it's a throwback pass. 51 seconds left in the half. It's still Georgia Tech by seven to go first half Auburn driving second and four Georgia Tech 22 Washington one of seven in the air trying to pass throws intercepted that's Sammy Lilly to the 17 yard line the ball badly underthrown and Sammy Lilly right where he needed to be his second interception of the season there is a flag down We'll check it for you. I think it's against Auburn. And it is. One happy young man there. Penalty is on the return. So Georgia Tech will have possession with 40 seconds to go. First down. 
so many times when you're a rushing football team, this happens in a ball game where you're having a work against the restriction of time. They're trying to go to Parks. The tight end, Lilly, picks it off. The ball was poorly thrown. Turns the ball over. Georgia Tech interested in only one thing, running out the clock and getting into the dressing room. Auburn with two timeouts left. See what they might do with them. What happened, Auburn really needed a little bit more time to do what they do best is run the football. They were forced to have to throw the ball, and Pat Washington is still, he's not a throwing quarterback. This is not a throwing offense, and they threw a bad ball, and it's intercepting and turns the ball over and stops the drive. Clock running with 10 seconds to go, first half. Dewberry taking his time, and he'll just go down and kill it. And that'll be the end of the first half, and you can hear the crowd reaction in Atlanta. They have loved it. Deep to receive along with Malcolm King. As Georgia Tech will get the football to start the third quarter, already leading 14 to 7. Tech at least a touchdown underdog coming into this one. And Chris Johnson will kick it away. 5-11 freshman. Drives Mays six yards deep in the end zone. And King tells him to down it. He does. And Georgia Tech will start from its own 20-yard line. Steve, what do you think Georgia Tech will do differently, if anything, in the second half? I don't think so. I think they had the distribution of the pressure off of Dewberry and Mays, and I think that was a nice mix. I think Dewberry's going to have to play an exceptional second half to keep the pressure on Auburn. They can't let up. They can't set on their lead. They cannot get in a scoring match. The game is developing just how they wanted it to. First and ten, Georgia Tech. Massey, 81. The tight end shifts to the near side. They have two wide receivers. Davenport and Lee. This is Mays, the tailback. And Mays will get maybe a yard and a half. Pat Thomas makes the stop. Don't forget tomorrow on CBS Sports, America's Chicago Marathon. The year's top marathon field will be there, including Olympic champion Joan Benoit, plus world record holder Steve Jones and Egward Christensen. They'll be part of 12,000 runners racing throughout Chicago tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern here on CBS Sports. There's an injured player on the field. We'll check on him when we come back right after this. Brought down by Edward Phillips, one of the linebackers in there, and that has been a concern for Auburn this year. The linebackers have not played as well as they had hoped. The defensive line in the secondary, however, are taking up a lot of that slack. Phillips, a sophomore. Michigan leading Iowa 7-6. That ball game at the half. Number one against number two. Third and four here for Georgia Tech. Collier and King are the running backs behind John Dewberry. Who wants to throw another blitz. He got rid of it. Complete to Collier, and it will be a first down Georgia Tech. Great effort by Dewberry and a great effort by Collier as Pat Thomas was blitzing. He got him once like that in the first half, and he hit Dewberry hard when he unloaded. They continue to keep the emotional aspect high for Georgia Tech. That has to help them. Dewberry really just drops the ball off. It's not real pretty, but Collier makes the catch. Now watch him having a sense of knowing where the first and ten is, and really Auburn tackled him and pushed him a little bit closer to that first and ten strike. Dewberry got a helmet right in the back on the last play. It is a first and ten for Georgia Tech. They'll run it out of the eye. King, the fullback, gets about four. Robinson had him around the ankles and brought him down shy of the 35-yard line. There's Bracken, the senior out of Las Vegas, the right guard. He came limping off on his left leg, and it puts a lot of pressure on the freshman, Eric Bearden, who has to come in and replace him on that offensive line. He's walking a little better than he was two minutes ago. Second down, six yards to go for Georgia Tech. They're leading at 14-7, opening minutes of the second half. Dewberry, play action. And it's intercepted by Powell. The free safety who came into the game with four interceptions, tied for fourth in the nation, picks off number five, and Dewberry hit him right in the hands. 
earlier in the first half, Jimmy Warren had a chance to take the ball away and make a big play. This time, Tommy Powell is not to be denied. He's going to break on the ball, number nine, make the interception. He knows the ball's underthrown. He's going to step in front of Gary Lee, the receiver, makes the interception. That's the what you can't be denied. Turnover, big play for Auburn. Everyone who loves for defensive coaches around Tom Powell, the free safety who made the interception and sets Auburn up in Georgia Tech territory. Bo Jackson inside the 40 to the 39, maybe the 38 yard line. One of the things about the Georgia Tech scheme in terms of their defense, it really forces offensive football teams, as we look at Jerry Mays, it really forces offensive teams to be more conservative. They're trying to get you out of your diversified blocking schemes into a more base-oriented blocking concept. That's what they do to you. Second and three, the little toss back to Bo Jackson, trying it outside. Cleve pounds with a good tackle. Got him as he came inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Well, they don't try to trick you or anything else. They just turn around and it's student body left or right. I think that Pat Dye and his offensive staff have really gone through a kind of a renaissance. At the first part of the year, Mike, they really had the attitude that they were going to show a lot of different looks and, and kind of try to camouflage the obvious of Bo Jackson. After Tennessee's loss, they determined, hey, what we're going to do is go play smash ball and you stop Bo Jackson. This is A.G., the fullback. Nothing in the middle. Hit hard. Cleve Pounds came up to finish him off after Glenn Spencer stopped him at the line of scrimmage. Pounds is one of those black watch defenders that refers to that 17th century Scottish palace guard. And if these guys showed up in Scotland, they'd rule the world. Well, Pounds was a former tailback. He's got good speed, reacts on the ball. And, you know, first first of all, he was posted by uh, 94. Spencer held him, held him up, and then he was able to put the tackle away. Second and 10, Auburn. 11 minutes, 7 seconds on a turning clock from Atlanta. Georgia Tech on top, 14-7. Washington gives it to Bo Jackson, and so does Ken Parker. Parker in the backfield, and Bo Jackson, great as he is, can't do much when someone who's 240 pounds hits him at the same time he gets the ball. Well, one thing that Georgia Tech's defensive line, they're, they're changing, they're giving multiple defensive looks. The offensive linemen are getting a little bit confused about where their man's gonna come from, and that, that particular time, it looked like one of the offensive tackles was not able to make a block, got stood up by someone he did not expect in the rush, and they made the play on Jackson. The senior Heisman Trophy candidate with 97 yards on 17 carries. Now it's third and 12. Option. Jackson. Almost broke it. Reginald Rutland, number 16, got enough of him to take him down. Watch Bo Jackson. Three people bounce off of his body. No one makes the tackle off of him. There's not a whole lot there. There's one, two, three men, and he pops loose. And if he had been able to keep up speed, he'd probably gone in a little bit 10, 15 yards farther. And now Auburn will go with its field goal team. Chris Knapp, who is three for three inside the 40, will try a 46-yard field goal. Very high, and it's going to be very short. Georgia Tech dodges a bullet and maintains their 14 to 7 lead. That's got to be a great thing for them for momentum. Timeout on the field, third quarter, 10-11 to go. It's Georgia Tech by seven. Just the setting that he wanted going into the second half. But still they're up by seven, and you have the feeling they may need some more points. Dewberry scrambling. Nice move by John Dewberry as he dives forward as Arthur Johnson made the tackle. Well, coming into the ball game, they realized they could not get into a scoring match with Auburn, but they needed to control them. Not a bend, don't break type philosophy, but something along the lines of being able to take your shots, give as little as you can, and, and hopefully be able to sustain drives and keep the offense off the field. And they've been able to do that reasonably effectively. And I think the defense played above their ability right now. You don't agree, but I think so. No, I think they're tough. Third down, two yards to go. This is Collier in motion, a single back remaining. Blitz, Dewberry unloads, and what a great play by Kevin Porter. He was out there man on man, and he made a great play. 
again, Auburn did not want to go to the blitz package. They are blitzing now, which tells you that they're not, they're trying to make things happen. They want to just four and five man rush. Dewberry gets squeezed and a great play, as you said, Mike, by Kevin Porter to knock the ball away from Davenport. Snow is on to punt. Been a good kicker all season. And Trey Gaines deep to receive, standing at his own 18. Not a lot of pressure. Beautiful punt by Snow. Another mortar shot. Gaines. Nothing. Hit down there on special teams by Michael Melvin. 45-yard punt and nothing on the return for Auburn. Tomorrow on the NFL Today, Herb Cross will take a look at the Rams' big play defense. They're the main factor in LA's 6-0 start this year. John Madden will explain why Lawrence Taylor has not been as effective this season as in others. And we'll have a look at the World Series with Pete Rose. That's all tomorrow on the NFL Today. Pat Washington leads his ball club out, and they'll give it to who else? Bo Jackson trying to get wide. Got by Swilling and brought down as he reaches the 27-yard line. You got to see a lot of Bo Jackson's ability on that play, just gliding and waiting for room and then busting it ahead. Well, if he glides too much and if he's too slow in terms of trying to find that little crease, then all of a sudden even Georgia Tech, because they have inferior speed, they're able to get out there. Also, they were working against the boundary, and that caused the play not to be quite as successful. Even when he doesn't look like he's doing much, he gets nine yards. Yeah, I was going to say the next point. <laughs> Almost got a first and ten. Typically, that play goes for more, though. That's right. Second and a yard for Auburn. A.G., the fullback, who has been contained very, very well by Georgia Tech's defense today. I think that illustrates, though, you don't realize how many yards he's gobbling up. That's right. The style of running that he has, because he does look rather methodical in until he creates that little crease for himself, and then he's gone. I thought you made a great point in the first half. Because it's Bo Jackson, you expect to see the S on his chest. You expect every play to go 20, 30, 40 yards. And it's almost a disappointment to see him only gain nine. It really is. But uh, Bo Jackson will gain a lot of yards. And that's the concern for Georgia Tech is if they can control him in the second half. He has 112 so far today going for more. What a move there. And a stiff arm will get him a couple of more out to the 35-yard line. Pulled down by Cleve Pounds, the rover back, who a year ago led this team in tackles with 114, and that's at a school record. So he's used to putting a shoulder pad in there. You know, it's hard to believe. Bo Jackson was a defensive end in high school, third team tailback, recruited because of his athletic ability and the things that the coaches saw in him. But my goodness to think that he was a defensive end. Well, the stories they tell about him, they swear they're all true, that he can throw a football 100 yards. Exceptional baseball play. The pass to Freddie Wagan is complete, and Sammy Lilly brings him down. And that was the first good-looking pass downfield that Pat Washington has thrown today. Washington has a strong arm, and this is the kind of pass when you're throwing it all across the field. You've got to have all the arm. Sure tackle by Sammy Lilly, number 37. Lacks in size. He's only 5'9", late signee. No one offered him a scholarship. 4'6 speed, but he's a fighter, and he's intense, and he broke down and made the tackle on Wagon 14. Washington now 2 out of 9, 17 yards and an interception. 6 minutes, 28 seconds to go, third quarter. Washington, make it reverse. Hogan out there got a piece of him as he gets into Georgia Tech territory. Ken Parker also helped to finish him off. Second time this game he's run that particular play. Ken Parker, number 84, has the responsibility to keep containment on the outside. Naked bootleg by Pat Washington. He's got the speed to find himself in the secondary, but a very sure tackle in there. Washington has done better on the ground than he has on the air. 31 yards and four carries. Another first down for the Tigers. Fullwood in a tailback straight up the middle. This kid is a great runner. And just tripped up by Mark White, the freshman linebacker. Fullwood with almost 350 yards rushing coming into this game. He averages 70 yards a game rushing, and that's behind Bo Jackson. 
8.1 yards every time he touches the football. The coaches say that he's a little bit of a hot and cold runner. He's a very proud runner, very secure in his ability, but he loses intensity sometimes, but he's an able replacement for Bo Jackson. Another first down, Auburn. Here's forward again. Driving inside the 15 to about the 12-yard line of Georgia Tech. And all at once, it looks like they're getting bigger holes in the middle of that Tech defensive line. Pat Schwilling, number 99, has a tough assignment working on the tight end. He's really being handled quite uh, easily by Jeff Parks, 82. He's out of the play. He can't make it from that position. He's being driven back by Parks. Auburn coaching staff loves Parks and Middleton, the H-back. Bo Jackson back in the game, and they're waiting for him, and it was White, the freshman linebacker from Upper St. Clair, Pennsylvania, who led the defensive charge. What an outstanding luxury to have if you're Auburn. You're the number two rut rushing offensive team in the country, the number one total offense, to have the depth at the running back and fullback position, to have a, to a Tommy Ag, a Reggie Ware, a Bo Jackson, Brent Fullwood, and in 30 scholarship, 30, 95 days, it's very difficult to create those kind of numbers That's right. in terms of the backs, and they've got very talented backs. Second down, nine yards to go, and the officials are going to call a timeout, and Georgia Tech has asked for a timeout on defense. There's a timeout on the field with four minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Georgia Tech on top of Auburn, 14-7. Brought them to this point. Don't ex don't, don't explode or, or self-destruct because you're not set really in your offensive plan. They're very secure in what they do, and I think that's the change in their mentality a little bit. We're going to stick with what has brought us here, and uh, I think they're very comfortable in it. Third down, six yards to go. Washington checks with Ag. It's fullback on the signal count. Jackson and the tackle made by Reginald Rutland. And boy, he was out there all by his lonesome, and he better make the tackle. This probably should go into the Georgia Tech highlight film. Watch Reggie Rutland one-on-one. -on -one. Bo Jackson works from the middle of his body and down his legs and puts him down, forces the field goal attempt. Chris Knapp, who missed the 46-yarder earlier, is on to try one from 23. And he got this one. Auburn closes within four points. But in that situation, Georgia Tech was probably very happy to give up the three and not the seven. It would have tied it up. Weeks by Syracuse. Nebraska with a lot of trouble with Missouri. Ohio State rolls over Purdue. It was closer than the final score would indicate. A mild upset, Alabama losing to Tennessee. Georgia and Vanderbilt, that's not a mild result at all. 13-13 tie. Mays, once again, driven nine yards deep this time into the end zone. Excellent kickoff by Chris Johnson. And Georgia Tech will have to start from its own 20-yard line. Right now, the momentum has shifted as Auburn has had a very good third quarter. Be interesting to see what Georgia Tech decides to try to do on offense. This is, this is where they really got a critical situation. They've got to have a good drive here. Tomorrow on CBS, week seven of the NFL season. Many of you will see the Dallas Cowboys, the NFL East leader at five and one against the Philadelphia Eagles. Impressive in rubbing the Cardinals. Some will see the Redskins and the Giants or other regional games, all starting with the NFL today. Check your local listing. Dewberry with a quick out to Gary Lee. And he's out of bounds as Jimmy Warren chases him out of there. It's been a big ball game for Gary Lee. He's made a couple of great catches. Well, he's an outstanding receiver. He only caught 12 balls coming into the ball game, but uh, he has big, po uh, big play potential, good size, a complete athlete, and really has taken advantage of Auburn and stretched them a little bit today. One yard to go for Georgia Tech. Time winding down in the third quarter. They'll give it to King, the fullback. And he has the first down across the 30 to about the 31 yard line. There's that Tennessee Alabama final again. Boy, is Johnny Majors having fun at Tennessee this year. North Carolina over NC State, one of those backyard brawls, 21 14. 
tough year for NC State. First and 10, Georgia Tech, 2.49 to go in the third quarter. The Yellow Jackets on top of the Tigers by seven. This is Mays. Trying to get outside, Davenport, his flanker threw him a couple of great blocks, and Jerry Mays stays on his feet. Davenport, 193-pound flanker, really threw him a good block, lost his man, and then hit him again, and Mays did a dance. Let's see if we can see the block that was very impressive, as you said, Mike. There's Mays catching the pass right there. No, it was... King made one great block also. And there's Davenport yeah, out and there's front Davenport. Of him. Two excellent blocks thrown on the sweep play. Seven yards for Mays. Second and three. Georgia Tech from their own 39. Davenport will go in motion with two tight ends. King the fullback. Gets a couple and no more. Good stop by Ben McCurdy, the linebacker. Here's Clemson over Duke, 21 to 9. Tigers are going to give a lot of people some trouble this year, even though they got off to a very slow start. And how about this? Virginia Tech over Virginia. That's one of those uh, games where you throw out the record books. And Virginia threw out Virginia Tech threw out Virginia with the book. First and 10, Tech. Their own 42. Collier. Nowhere to go on this one. Gets a couple and a swarming Auburn defense all over him. I think the ability of Georgia Tech to move the ball deep in their own territory to midfield, if they have to turn it over and punt the football, they're going to get really put Auburn in an adverse field position, change the momentum a little bit by field position. No, they're playing the very game that they thought they would have to play to have a chance to beat Auburn. Joel Carter, number 43, comes in at fullback. Collier at tailback on second and eight. Mannion, the tight end, shifts to the near side. Both wide receivers go to the other. Here's a blitz. And they get it out to Collier with a great catch. And Corey Collier gets out to the 47-yard line. Great play by Dewberry. Saw the blitz coming and just hung it up there. And Collier got it with one hand. Oftentimes, I don't think that we respect or appreciate the job of a, of a quarterback to try to get the ball away. He gets so much pressure from Bruce, number 93, and throws an end-over-end -end Steve Davis-type pass to Collier, <laughs> who really makes a, a good play out of nothing play. Uh, you threw better than that, I remember. Uh, I don't know. Dewberry, 9 out of 14, 116 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Third and five for Georgia Tech. Collier goes in motion. Here's a blitz again, and it was going to be a quarterback draw, but Auburn with the blitz got Dewberry. Pat Thomas again from the right end, and another big play for that young man. That'll bring the third quarter to an end. With the score, Georgia Tech 14, Auburn 10 will return after this message and a word from your local station. That's college football, sponsored by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Visa, accepted worldwide for shopping, dining, and travel. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation. Mike Padre and Steve Davis with you from Atlanta, Georgia. And we're starting the fourth quarter as Mike Snow, who's averaged 47.3 yards a kick, comes on to punt for Georgia Tech on fourth and eighth. Snow has gone back to the three-step kick, drills another one. Trey Gaines fakes the fair catch, and this one will get an Auburn bounce and go into the end zone. So the Tigers will start from their own 20-yard line as we start the fourth quarter. A reminder, next Saturday from what should be a sold-out Madison Square Garden, CBS Sports will present Patrick Ewing's NBA debut as his New York Knicks host the Philadelphia 76ers. Out of Georgetown, Ewing is perhaps the most celebrated player to join the NBA since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar arrived in 1969, but he'll face a tough test in that opener against Moses Malone and the 76ers. That's next Saturday at 1, right here on CBS. Auburn down by four. They'll give it to Bo Jackson. Tries to slip it outside. Gets about three yards. Good tackle by Malone. Right now, let's go to New York for a college football update. All right.
right, Mike, Iowa is driving here for a score, but it's a poor choice by Chuck Long as he throws the ball late outside. Dieter Heron is there to make yet another interception for Michigan this season. Iowa still losing 7-6 in the third quarter. Let's go back to Mike and Steve. 14-25 left in the ball game, and it's Auburn in possession, down 14-10, facing a second and six from their own 24. Give to Jackson. They tried a little delay action there, sent A.G. in one direction, and Jackson in the other, but they will keep an eye, if not two, on Bo Jackson. One very instinctive point that I think Bo Jackson reveals, when he gets in a crowd, he's so protective of the football. He does not fumble. You know, he just aware that he's going to get hit so you see both arms go to that football for you young kids that are watching that's really a, a, a great ability of an athlete to be able to know and protect the football don't fumble it don't cough it up jackson with 126 yards behind that great offensive line of steve wallace jeff lott ben tamborello yan coward and stacy searles jackson he's loose they'll never get him They've got about 20,000 Auburn, fan, Auburn fans here today, and they are all on their feet for Bo Jackson, who has gone over the 200-yard mark in rushing with that 76-yard scamper. Knapp is on for the point after. And has this one turned around? Auburn has taken a 17-14 lead over Georgia Tech. Steve, that's what you kept saying. Well, I really felt like that if Auburn could get outside, that Georgia Tech did not have the ability, the speed, to contain Bo Jackson or any of the Auburn backs. He really, he bounced off one tackler, and then it's a track meet. They do not have the ability to play a lateral-type game with you. They've got to be able to, you just can't, uh, you just, he's going to outrun you every time. 13-23 left in the game. It's Auburn over Georgia Tech, 17-14. To illustrate that speed kills, watch Bo Jackson. Three players will have the angle on Bo Jackson. One, two, three. Now, watch the difference that Bo Jackson's speed makes. 4-2-2 sprinter, that is world-class speed, hung on a 225-pound frame. Put those together, you get 76-yard run. And 202 yards rushing in this ball game out of Auburn's 324 yards total offense. Bill Curry, who had seen his team up by seven, now sees them down by three with 13-23 left in the ball game. Mays and King will go deep as Chris Johnson is set to kick it away for the Tigers. And the momentum has definitely shifted in Auburn's favor. Mays will have a chance on this one from the four. He's got room to run. Jerry Mays up to the 42-yard line. He was caught by Shan Morris, the son of the former Georgia Tech All-American. Or Mays had a touchdown, and a flag goes down on top of it. And it's against Auburn. And Mays is still down. Boy, did he turn it on. Well, Jerry Mays is still down, and he does not look like he will be getting up real quickly. Here's the call. Dead ball foul. A run back on the defense. First down. Now Mays gets to his feet. That's good to see. Mays does an excellent job of following the wall. Look how impressive the wall is. Now he finds a little crease and breaks into the area that where there's just not any players. Watch Auburn's concern, there's Bo Jackson. First and 10, Georgia Tech in Auburn territory at the 44 after the penalty. Davenport goes in motion. 
Fullback, King straight up the middle. Inside the 40 to the Auburn, 38. Tackle made by Harold Hallman, Tracy Rocker in the middle of that defensive line. Gain of six for King. There's Mays being attended on the sideline, and they're working on that left leg. It looks like the ankle. Oh, what a big game for Jerry Mays. He has both Georgia Tech touchdowns. One receiving and one rushing. Second and four for Tech. Most of the crowd on its feet. Collier tries to get outside. Did not have a chance. Edward Phillips, number 46, was waiting on him, and there is a mismatch. Phillips at 239, and Collier at 193 pounds and 5'7". Georgia Tech bounce, having, again, to bounce the play outside. And they just ride him into the end zone. Big Edward play Hill. here, third and three. 12.36 left to go in the game. Auburn, 17, Georgia Tech, 14. And the crowd is really into this one. Out of the eye, they split the wide receivers. Give it to Collier. He's hit and dives forward to the 35, but he's going to be shy of the first down. Harold Hallman, the nose guard, in on the tackle. What do you do if you're Bill Curry on fourth and less than a yard? Well, I think that he realizes that the offense of Auburn has really found some combinations that are working for them. I think that physically they're wearing Georgia Tech down. I think there's obvious they're going to go for it. They need a first and ten. Dewberry leads them out. Remember in the first half, they had third and short twice, and both times they passed. They'll give it to Collier. He dives, and he didn't make it. A great defensive stand by Auburn, and Tracy Rocker with his hands in the air. But Alex Duchak was the man in the middle of that defense, number 80, and he made the stop. And Collier had the flight cut short. What I wanted to say, they need a first and ten, but more than anything else, they need to control the ball, keep the ball, and they just go over the top. You have to find a little angle or something, go over, and you just don't have the ability. Didn't have the ability to get high enough. Auburn holds on defense, leading 17-14 fourth quarter. It's left in the game. Auburn has recaptured the lead, 17-14. Steve, I'd have to think this is a big defensive series for Georgia Tech because Auburn loves this situation ahead and in possession of the ball. And they can play it into their own hands. They've got, they can run their own offense and attack. They don't have to modify it at all and give it to those people. Forward in a tailback. Mark Pike hits him, but not before he crosses the 40 to about the 43-yard line. And as you said earlier, what a luxury to have a forward come in for Bo Jackson. Clock turning, 11.25 to go in the game. Fullwood with a gain of eight at second and two. Fullwood again. Right side being chased this time and won't get anything out of it. Nice play by Cleve Pounds, the strong safety called in Georgia Tech system the rover back, and they came up and knocked him out of bounds for a loss. Sometimes the sidelines can really be your friend when you're playing a, a lateral type team that Auburn is. If you get one hit on the running back and force him to bounce parallel to the line of scrimmage, then hopefully if you're playing with the sidelines, then your speed, your overall team concept can get you there and uh, you can make the play. Paul Jurgensen, number 86, is in on that strong side defensive end for Swilling on third and two. Here's the option for Washington. Good run by Washington. He has the first down out to the 47-yard line. The senior from Mobile did his job on that one. Much to the dismay of Bill Curry. The lead is three points, 17-14, and we're under 11 minutes, 10.58 and counting. Beautiful Saturday afternoon for college football, and it's been a great one. Georgia Tech and Auburn. First and 10 for the Tigers. Bo Jackson back in at the tailback. 
Lost the ball. And Auburn, for the second time in a game, got a fumble back that was laying on the ground, waiting to be recovered by Georgia Tech. That was Stacy Searles, the big right tackle, who got it back. Bo Jackson talked about early, gets in the crowd, usually protects the ball. He really ran into the back of a Georgia Tech player, and the ball bounced free, and it fell right into the hands of Serrell, number 60. He was very fortunate to be there, because there was Georgia Tech black jerseys all around the ball. Spotted at the Auburn, 47, second and 10. No gain on the fumble. Three wide receivers in the ball game, and Washington wants to throw. And incomplete through the hands of Freddie Wagan. Pass was a little high, but he could have caught it. Let's go to New York for another college football update in Jim Nance. Well, Mike, life has not been easy for teams in the top ten. Oklahoma losing to Miami of Florida with ten minutes to go. Quarterback Troy Aikman's injury has been diagnosed now as a broken ankle, most likely out for the rest of the regular season. Texas 15 to 13 over Arkansas in the fourth quarter. Jeff Ward has five field goals for the Longhorns. And Air Force. 35-19 uh, over Colorado State. Looks like the Falcons will be off to their best start since 1970. A win today will make them 7-0. Let's go back to Mike and Steve. Jim, thank you very much. 9.52 to go, and the crowd really in it now. Third and 10 for Auburn from their own 47. Jackson will not have the first down, and Georgia Tech's defense is held in a very big series. Ralph Malone, number 95, makes the tackle on Big Bo Jackson. What's important is they forced Auburn to have to kick the football. That was, a, I, might, I imagine, the concern for the defensive coaches, the way they were just methodically going down the field. Now they've been able to force them in a punting situation. Probably will not get good field position, but they're going to get the ball. Colbert is back to kick. And Sammy Lee waits at his 10. May not get a shot at this one either. Colbert has been very good at putting the ball out of bounds. Kicks the air out of it. Let's see if it makes the end zone. And it won't. It takes a big bounce for Auburn. They lost it. Where will they down it? Inside the one-yard line. And now one of the official signals, it's a touchback and will go out to the 20. They bobbled that ball, Steve, or they'd have had it down at about the one-foot line. 9.05 left. Auburn over Georgia Tech, 17-14. There you see the score from the biggest game of the day, Iowa leading Michigan 9-7. You'll be joining that game at the conclusion of Auburn, Georgia Tech. Big possession here. Dewberry to throw on first down, and it's stuffed in his face by Andre Bruce, number 93, the sophomore from Montgomery, Alabama. He saw a pass early and got up there. Andre's an outstanding special teams performer, and that time he made a great play from scrimmage. He's made some outstanding plays today. He's put a hard rush on the quarterback on blitz plays, knocked down the ball, just played very well. Second and 10, Georgia Tech. Collier is the tailback. He'll have it on the delay, and nothing. Andre Bruce again in on the tackle, along with Edward Phillips, 46, and number 45, Jimmy Warren, in the right corner. Uh, you can see the intensity picking up for this Auburn Tiger defense. Now is the time they need it, up by three points with 8.37 left to go. They still have a shot at the national championship, they believe. But a second loss would do them in. Third down, nine and a half. That's Collier in motion. Three-man rush. Dewberry escapes once. Unloads complete to Collier. Collier to the 32-yard line. First down, Georgia Tech. Oh, Dewberry playing Houdini on that one. What relentless talent of John Dewberry to be able to hang in there. He had a chance to run the ball. He knew that would be a question. He had to go a long distance for the first and 10. Watch him. He gets out. He throws the ball really off balance and hits Collier, who was far enough down the field to get the first and 10. Nice grab by Corey Collier. First down, Georgia Tech. We're under eight minutes to go. The Yellow Jackets down by three. This is easily into the ballgame for the first time at tailback. And the big man gets it out to the 43. Easily is listed at 222. He looks more like 245. And when he gets it going, he is a load to bring down.
We haven't seen Mays in a while. Remember, he had that left hand injury. And now they say he also has a turt toe. So we may not see Jerry Mays. Those are extremely painful. First and 10, Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets own 42. Mack, the fullback, slides off one tackle, gets to the 45. Now let's go to New York for a college football report with Pat Hayden. Mike, Iowa has just kicked a 36-yard field goal to take a 9-7 lead in the fourth quarter, and folks, you'll see the conclusion of the Michigan-Iowa game after Auburn-Georgia Tech is over. Let's go back to Mike and Steve. Thank you, Pat. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to go in the game. Second and eight, Georgia Tech from their own 45. Tech down by three. Dewberry to throw, fakes to Collier. Now goes to the other side to Matt. 44-43 yard line of Auburn. A 12 yard gain and Dewberry is into acting 101. He set it up beautifully. Really did. What John Dewberry did is really make that play work. It was slow developing. He looked to the right. He had Auburn really backing on its heels and then was able to come back and make the completion. But it was Dewberry's ability to look defenders off and complete the short pass. Charles Mack only his fourth reception of the season. And it gives Georgia Tech a first down at the Auburn 43. Joel Carter in at fullback. He's blocking for Corey Collier. Collier gets three to the Auburn 40. On the carry, number 25. Time Corey becoming Collier. a factor. We're at six minutes and 28 Long seconds left. Georgia Tech trying to get in a position at least to go for a 17-17 tie, but you know they want more than that. King comes back in at fullback, and Carter will check out. This is where Dewberry is so valuable. He is a terrific leader. Davenport comes in motion. They'll give it to King, the fullback, slides off one tackle, and then is flattened by Jimmy Warren. Oh, what a shot by Warren. Holy cow. Malcolm King, the fullback, 5'9", 197 sophomore. Jimmy Warren, 45, has had some good plays and a couple of questionable plays in terms of uh, decisions, but that time he put a physical assault on Malcolm King. Well, Malcolm wasn't hurt, but he may be late for the dance tonight. He doesn't Third. know where the dance is, I don't think. Third and two at the 35-yard line. Lee in motion. Collier got to the 34, but he'll be shy of the first down. And, Steve, we come up with the same situation we had last time. It's going to be fourth and a yard. They ran for it, and they didn't make it. Last time they went with a kind of a dive of trying to jump over the top of that Auburn defensive front. Their size is 6'3", 5'11", and 6'3", across the front. Now Bill Curry's trying to figure out, they're going to take a timeout and talk about it, figure out just what play will work in this situation. Number 40, number 40. Well, I think that's a great call. You don't want to get a play in there that's not going to work right now. This may be your last shot with 4.56 left. As you look into the huddle, John Dewberry's doing it. A lot of talking, trying to communicate what plays he feels like. Now the coaches are talking to their people up in the booth to determine just what play is right for this call. Dewberry, I think, as a quarterback, as a senior, as a leader, he will have to be the confident one that that's the right play, too. Steve, as a coach, in the first half, they threw on third and short a couple of times. Uh, it would be a gutsy call to come out here and throw on fourth and one, wouldn't it? Well, it would be gutsy. I think it would be rather creative. I think you might find someone very open. But the problem is, does Auburn, they're, they, they're going to stack inside. Do they take a blitz? If they're in a blitz package, then all of a sudden, it's got to be a short pass to make it work. Something else very to think fun about. play to watch. Something I would want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Something else to think about. If it is a blitz, Gary Lee is the veteran receiver out there, and he's the guy John Dewberry would be going to. He's the man he trusts. Generally, in short yardage, they like the isolation, the trap play, or the sweep play. That's what they run in their, in their attack. Collier is the tailback on fourth and one from the Auburn 34. And Dewberry wants to throw under pressure. And he's going to be short of the first down. 
I don't think he made it. It looked like Dewberry lost his footing and stumbled. And where they marked him down, he'll be a yard shot. They mark it closer to the 43. Now they move it back. And it's a yard shy. Uh, going this way. Turn real quick. The Tigers have held. They'll get the football with 4.50 left. John Dewberry really, I think, had the play, but he stumbles. I really believe that he had. See, he slipped. He was trying to turn sharp, trying to find that little seam, that little gap to get for the first and 10. He knew exactly where it was. Let's watch Pat Dye's reaction. Four minutes, 50 seconds to go in the ball game. Auburn with its second big defensive stand has the ball back. This is Bo Jackson, look out. Running over people. The last man he trampled was Mike Travis, the right cornerback. Michigan leading Iowa 10-9. It's now in the fourth quarter and you'll be seeing the conclusion of that ball game when we're wrapped up here in Atlanta. Bo Jackson, 221 yards on 29 carries. I'd say he's got to be considered the best. I, th I think so. I think he is the best, and I think he's won the Heisman Trophy. I, I really believe he's the best player in America. One of the questions at Auburn is, is he going to go on uh, to football or baseball? It was a first down for Bo Jackson. Here's Washington. He's in trouble. This time made a nice move to get away. Parker chasing him and missed. Let's go to New York for an update with Pat Hayden. Mike, as you just said, Mike Gillette kicked a 40-yard field goal to put the Wolverines back on top, 10-9 to in the fourth quarter. We're going to bring you that game to the conclusion of yours. Let's go back to Mike and Steve. Thank you, Pat. Four minutes, 10 seconds left to go in this ballgame. A second and four for the Auburn Tigers. And that defense has been on, a, on the field a long, long time for Georgia Tech, especially in this half. They're going to have to dig in now to give the Yellow Jackets any kind of chance. Livingston, the H-back, the man in motion. Jackson, very close to the first down as he reaches the Georgia Tech 45-yard line. Third down, one yard to go. Part of the Auburn band that made the trip here. About two hours away down the road to Auburn, Alabama. In baseball, that man is compared to people like Mantle and Mays. Not to mention Superman. Third and a yard, first down, Auburn and Bo Jackson. We've said a lot about Bo Jackson. Let's see what some other people have had to see about him uh, this year around the country. Mike Wilbon of the Washington Post. Unquestionably the best back in college football today. Tough to argue with. And Michael has seen his share of college football. 31 carries, 228 yards. Well, they take him out for a breather, but he doesn't even look tired, Steve. First and 10 with 3.04 to go. Fullwood, no chance. Hit in the backfield by Mark Pike. And now those timeouts are going to be an important factor. Georgia Tech only has one left. And Auburn is just as interested in the clock as it is gaining yards. And you notice the Tigers are taking their own sweet time. Second down, 13 yards to go. 2.29 left. Parks, the tight end in motion. Here's Washington on the option. Pitches it out to Fullwood. Tried to stay in bounds and did. Rutland creamed him. Reggie Rutland, 16, has met, have, have, really has made some fine plays today. This time working on Fullwood on the option. You see him right in the middle of your screen. He's got to go take him a one-on-one. -on -one. Head right to the chest, puts him out. I don't know who won that battle because they're very physical, punishing backs at Auburn. Excellent tackle by Rutland. Great play by Fullwood to stay in bounds 
and keep that clock turning. Bo Jackson is back in. Fullwood is out. Auburn with 350 yards rushing today. Third and 11. Georgia Tech must hold to have a chance. Here comes the reverse. Wagan. Holy cow, what a call in that situation. A flag goes down. I think you're going to have a hold against Auburn, but it's it may be after they got the first down. We'll have to wait to see. No, nope, they're going to bring it back. And what a terrible thing to have happen to the Tigers. No need to hold. You already had the first down and maybe the game in your pocket. Reggie Rutland, number 16, who had just made the great tackle on Brent Fullwood. I bet Reggie felt like he was in custody. Two of the Auburn defenders just held him up. Just tried to take him out of the play. He was so frustrated by it. Holding on the offensive team. Repeat third down again. But because they mark it off from the spot of the foul, it's third and a yard. One break for Auburn, one for Georgia Tech. And we're down to a minute 34 and counting. The clock running. And Georgia Tech must now hold twice in short yardage situation, we would presume. Wouldn't want to guess who's going to get the football, would you? Bo Jackson, Ricardo Ingram got a piece of him, but he's down to the 20-yard line. Another first down for Auburn. That'll stop the clock momentarily while they move the sticks. But Bo Jackson with 14 yards, another first down. And Georgia Tech only has one timeout left. Another aspect of the dimensions of Bo Jackson is how he punishes people. He really just deals out so much in terms of the way he runs, his power. He's not afraid to, he's not going to go to the turf or go to the sidelines. He can dish it out as well as he can take it. 242 yards rushing for Bo Jackson, his second biggest game of the season. He had 290 in the opener against Southwestern Louisiana. <laughs> There's a perfect illustration of Bo Jackson. Football player in a football uniform with a baseball cap on. Timeout with 108 left. Back after this. Auburn in control with a minute and eight seconds left from Grant Field in Atlanta. The Tigers on top of Georgia Tech, 17-14. Tech has used this last time out, and Auburn has a first and 10 at the 19. And the one thing left to do now is protect the football. Flags go down. A couple of right crosses thrown. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are from Auburn. Bo Jackson, who rushed for 242 yards. And from Georgia Tech, Jerry Mays. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Also a big day for Jerry Mays. Two touchdowns, both of Georgia Tech's scoring drives. Fourth time this year, Bo Jackson has gone over 200 yards rushing. He's not in there right now, and Pat Washington will just down it, and Georgia Tech can only stand by and watch. Auburn showed a lot of character coming from behind. They had a lot of things against them, the home field advantage, the momentum. Georgia Tech was playing some great defense. It's really an important victory for them, as all of them are, but they've got a tough task. Mississippi State next week, Florida, East Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama are all yet to come on their schedule. Bill Curry's done a great left. job at Georgia Tech. Boy, Sorry, yes. Mike, he really has. Washington just downs the ball again, and that'll be it. They won't have to run another play. Auburn, with a great display in the second half, has pulled one out of the fire against the Georgia Tech team that hung in there just as long as it could. And Pat Dye will come across the field to shake hands with his friend Bill Curry. Great win for Auburn. Tough loss for Georgia Tech. Auburn will go to 5-1 and one on the year and probably move up in the rankings. It was a tough day for other top 10 ranked teams. Georgia Tech will fall to 4-2. and two. Here's the final. Auburn 17, Georgia Tech 14 on the Yellow Jackets home field. Now let's join number one against number two, Iowa and Michigan and Brent Musburger.